Hey, Vinita, are you there? I did, yes, back here on Sunday morning. Oh, good. So, we were talking about uh, that in our basic form, we're a conscious being. Yes, I remember that bead, and you were talking about the smells and the sights and the and the sounds. But you know, uh, I was thinking about the following: even when you are subjective and you're caught up in subjectivity, you're still that conscious being, aren't you? Well, now that's a very interesting point. What you're aware of is the experience that you're having, but you are not awake to the moment as it is. You're not alive to the facts. Does that make sense of what is there? You no, are, can you explain that a little further? Okay. There's a difference. Here I am with my subjectivity. Okay. So when you're caught up in subjectivity and you're experiencing yourself as a loser, you're not being awake to a fact like you're aware of a tree. You're having an experience of yourself and you're aware of the experience but you're not awake to the, the alive to facts. You're having an experience of a projected notion. Like, so what happens is my mind creates a notion, I am a loser. I'm yeah. now experiencing myself as that. So yeah. I say that I'm aware of myself. But am I aware of what is actually there? Or am I just simply aware of an experience like having a dream? So uh, here, let me let me get let me get back one step. So we, here I am sitting in a meeting, yeah. and I'm uh, completely in caught up in the logic of trying to be right and and score a point. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, somewhere along, uh, I are you telling me that I, I lost sight of being the real aware the aware person of the sounds and this? Uh, I mean, this this is so instead of well, basically, you see, the thing is this. I can be aware of the fact that um, that someone has done something I don't like. Yes. Okay, so I'm aware of their action. That's objective. I'm aware of the fact that um, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. okay? That's factual, isn't it? But yes. Then, then what I can do is, because they've done it, they're a complete and utter idiot. And now I'm, now I'm experiencing, I'm having an experience of them as a complete and utter idiot. But that's really, I'm, I'm experiencing my thought about them as yes. though it is true about them. Yes. Now, I'm aware of the experience I'm having of them, okay. but I'm no longer awake to the objective facts. You remember when we talked about that objectivity is because it's there, you see it, and subjectivity yes. is because you see it, it's there. Yes. So when you look, when so the thing is, there's a huge difference between. We see when you're being yourself, you are awake to, to you're awake to the moment. What is happening? You see, yes. when you hear the sounds, does, is your mind producing the sounds, or are you just aware of what? Because the sounds are there, you're aware of them. The second one, because the sounds are there, I'm aware of them. Yes, but when you're saying to yourself unknowingly, this guy's a, a bloody, this guy's an idiot, do you see what I mean? Yeah. You're experiencing that person as an idiot, but that's not, that's because you see it that way, you're having that experience. Because you're seeing it that way, it is there. It's not, yes. it is there as an experience. Yes. But it's not objective. Yes. Does that make yeah. sense? It makes sense because, uh, uh, you know, the somewhere, as you said, uh, it's, it's a question of being sensitive to this. Uh, see, you slip into subjectivity. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an imperceptible shift. We don't, when we're being subjective, yeah. we don't know we're being subjective because we experience our subjectivity as objective. Yes, we that's take, exactly the point. That's we, exactly the point. And we're actually unconscious that we're subjective. So we're unconscious that we're unconscious. of. We're no longer conscious of facts as they are. Right. And we're unconscious of the fact that we're unconscious of the fact. Yes, that's so true. Because in that meeting when I was trying to score a point, mm -hmm. I was enjoying it thoroughly and I didn't realize that I was being completely ineffective in the total picture. 
but I was just, I, mean, I was completely subjective actually. Yeah. And, and you can say really when you look at, when, we, when we're being subjective, you know that saying, you know, you're, you're a dreamer, you're dreaming. In one sense, that's kind of true. You see, because you see, when I take, when I take, they write uh, psychiatric books about this. You know, when I take reality to be my thoughts about reality, they consider that psychosis. <laughs> 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 so in that definition, that would mean that we're all in psychosis 99% of the time. So. The thing is, is that what, we, what, what we're attempting to do in, in Vedanta is we want to be able to appreciate facts as they are. We want to be alive to facts. Right. The fact that I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you, I can be alive to that fact, can't I? Yes. Right? The fact that... Um, that maybe I'm angry at you, and I think that you're 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 you're, you're a total nasty woman. Yeah. So that's an idea, but I'm experiencing it as a fact. Now, am I awake to a fact, or am I having an experience that you are that? You're having an experience. But I think I'm being alive to a fact, don't I? Yes. So one 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 is the basis of the the basis of the experience is notions, isn't it? Absolutely. That exist with me, yes. that have been projected as experience unknowingly. Yes, it's but absolutely I, unknowing, yes. yes. But when, I, when I'm sitting down, I'm just simply listening to sounds, the sounds happen and I'm aware of them. Yeah. I'm, awake, I'm awake to them. Yes. And so what Swami Dayananda says is that we... To, to practice being objective, you stick with the description. You know, you go, this person's done something I don't like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a fact. And he says, then you put a full stop after it. This yes. person's done something I don't like. I'd like to wring his neck. Full stop. <laughs> I, even yes. wish, I wish he doesn't do that. Full stop. Yeah. But if you put a comma, he says, if you put a comma, they've done something I don't like. Therefore, they're a complete and utter idiot and they're just giving me such a hard time. Then I've started making a story in my head that yes. gets projected as experience and I'm no longer objective. Yes. And the whole, the whole practice, the whole practice of Vedanta is me shifting from being subjective yeah. to me being objective. Indeed. But, but the basis of, is, of that objectivity is me, myself, as a conscious being. Yes. Okay, so that's, so when we're talking about Vedanta, what we're, when we're talking about the practice of Vedanta, it's an important thing to me. And, and in Vedanta, when I'm being myself as a conscious being, then I'm no longer being not myself. And that's considered the solution because Swami Dayananda says is that you are the problem. In other words, when I've become my thoughts and become my reactions, do you see what I mean? When I've yes. become that, when I've become that, that is the problem. The problem is located with me. Here I am. Yeah. Here I am struggling with this terrible, nasty person because the angry person always projects an, a world to be angry about. A sad person projects a world to be sad about. A confused yes. person projects a confusing world. Now, when that person, when you shift from being from that person you're taking yourself to be, which is also just a notion, and you become yourself as a conscious being, when the angry person disappears, guess what happens to the world he's angry about or she's angry about? It disappears too. Indeed. <laughs> when, the, when the fearful person is no longer there, the fearful world disappears. Right. When, when the confused person is no longer there, the confusing world disappears. So in Vedanta, the solution is being ourselves and knowing what that means. And then the first step in Vedanta in terms of what they call emotional growth is being ourselves as a conscious individual living in the world who is awake to the realities of life. Yes. And this is considered essential in terms of the preparation because when you, are, when, you, when you are being yourself as a conscious being, you find that within yourself 
There is just simply a sense of being secure, being composed, and being content. Sometimes this becomes evident when we go for a walk in, in nature because nothing is triggering our psychology and we feel sort of good within ourselves. Have you had experiences like that? Sure, be You know, what I was thinking was, it, uh, you are right, but being objective, uh, you know, this conscious, aware being, it's almost like a sense of relief. It's actually quite easy to do that. That's right, because all the psychological burdens do not exist when you are being yourself. And this is going to be yeah. a fundamental emphasis as we go through these uh, conversations, okay? Yeah, right. Okay, well, thanks very much, Vaninta. Thanks, Beat. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.